Hi, it's Heidi, and it's time to wash my hair. So I thought I'd do a step-by-step -step video of um, my curly hair routine. Uh, so I'm just going to be explaining what I do from washing to applying product to styling with curly hair. So I'm a professional hairstylist, and I've been doing hair for over 10 years in the salon. But most of what I'm sharing with you today just comes from having naturally curly hair. So um, let's jump right in. I usually go about four or five days, sometimes more, but um, as we, as most of us know that have curly hair, um, you know, not washing every day is, is, is usually appropriate because our hair is very, very dry. So just, you know, if you want to establish like an amount of days that you're comfortable with, depending on how greasy your hair gets, how like naturally oily, um, the roots get and then also if your curls don't don't hold up throughout the days then obviously you'll have to rewash it and restyle it but um, pretty much like if you can wait three days that's good if you can do longer that's even better so I start by brushing my hair out so this is this is sort of an optional step sometimes it's really hard depending on what type of curl you have uh, but if you have a good brush, I use I use the wet brush. Um, if you have a good brush, then you should be able to get through your tangles. Uh, the reason why I like doing this is because when you wear your hair curly, you don't have many options to be brushing your hair in between washes. So it's really really good for your scalp. Um, it cleans it cleans the scalp of all like the dead dead skin cells. Um, it also cleans out like all that hair that's been shedding and kind of has nowhere to go because it's it's kind of wrapped up in your curls so it cleans out all the all the loose hair and um, it's also really important to get tangles out before you wash your hair because you don't want to be you don't want to be shampooing with tangles in your hair it just kind of makes the tangles worse and then when it comes time to brush it at some point then it's going to be much more difficult so so I like to brush through, see this is, this is really easy with a good brush. Um, so I just sit and brush and it feels really good on your scalp, it's very healthy for your hair to do this. So since you're going to be washing, it's okay to frizz your hair out like this with the brush. I get really super, super like nappy tangles under here, kind of like dreads, um, so that normally is where I have to work on getting all these tangles out. But as you can see, I'm just like gently going through. I'm not ripping through my hair. Um, so I'm not causing breakage on the ends. If you can't be gentle with your hair, then maybe you should comb it in the shower with the conditioner in. But I really recommend trying this, trying this step because it feels really good. So I'm going to wash my hair next. I'm going to shampoo it and condition it. Um, we're not going to see that in this video, but I will talk about it. Uh, the shampoo and conditioner that you should be using uh, should be gentle and it should be paraben and sulfate free. Something specifically for curls is going to be good because it's going to, um, it's going to keep the cuticle closed. So with curly hair, you have to remember that you always want to keep that cuticle like as closed and sealed as possible. So a very gentle shampoo will help with that. And um, brushing it obviously helps with shampooing because you're able to really get in there and get your scalp clean. So if you're having issues reaching your scalp, sometimes with curly hair it can get, um, especially when you have really thick curly hair, it can get kind of like almost like matted to your head when it's wet. So what I like to do is tilt my head to the side so that my hair hangs loose. And this is again in the shower. Tilt my head to the side so the hair hangs loose and then I can get my fingers up in there because you really want your fingertips to have contact with your scalp. That's the whole point of shampooing is to get your scalp and the first few inches of your roots clean. So you're gonna be doing this you can you can even you can flip all the way over or you just tilt to the side and get that that lather going 
So you never want to scrub the ends of your hair with, with shampoo. Uh, this is really important to avoid, especially when you have curly hair that's sensitive and frizzy and, and again, keeping that cuticle closed. So don't be doing this in the shower with your shampoo. No scrubbing the ends, just the roots. If, your hair, if you feel like your hair is dirty, the suds and the water that washes over it when you rinse it out is going to be good enough to get it clean. So no scrubbing, just concentrate on the first few inches of your roots. So after you shampoo, rinse it out really well, and then you're going to wring your hair out, get all the excess water, so you're going to be like wringing it out in the shower, get all that water out, and then apply your conditioner and be pretty liberal with the conditioner and I like to again because my hair is tangle free it's really easy to apply the conditioner and uh, just I just usually work it through with my fingers and then I take a clip into the shower after I put my conditioner in I clip my hair up and out of the way like this and then I do the rest of my shower stuff and then rinse out the conditioner and then you're good to go. All right, so now I've shampooed and conditioned my hair and it's wrapped up in a t-shirt. So I got this t-shirt from Target for maybe like five dollars. Um, I like using a t-shirt because it doesn't draw so much um, of the moisture out of the hair because when you put your product in you want your hair to be really nice and wet still. You don't want dry ends. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but um, also the t-shirt the is super soft, like a normal bath towel is really rough and it's going to cause a lot of frizz. So the t-shirt's the really soft, it's not like rubbing you know, and moving a lot, it's really actually like nice and tight on there and it's just taking out the right amount of water. So um, I'm going to take it down and apply product. It's really important that your hair is still really wet when you put the product in not so much dripping but you want it to be you want it to be as wet as possible uh, you could even put product in before you put the the towel t-shirt on like if you take your product into the shower um, after you wring your hair out you could put the product in then that would work well for someone that has very 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 frizzy curly hair uh, so, so my hair is still my hair is still really really damp, and I am going to use a spray and then a gel. So um, definitely want to separate your hair so that you get an even application. And I don't know that a lot of people use enough product. I hear all the time that like oh that didn't work for me and I think it's because there's not enough being used of most of most things so you can be especially with a spray for this spray is like a climate control um, it has UV protection in it it's it's like a lightweight leave-in conditioner but it, it makes it um, using a spray as a foundation makes it easier for the product to go through like work through your hair it also like balances out the pH level, so that's good for before before applying product also. Okay. So I'm gonna kinda loosen up my hair and establish where I want my part to be. And then I'm gonna start putting my gel in. I use gel because my hair is medium medium to thick. I have a good amount of frizz and my curl is pretty strong. So f for me, a gel works really well to tame it. And a gel also helps, a gel is like long lasting. So I mentioned before that I usually go four or five days in between washing. And that's because I usually use a gel or sometimes I use a mousse, and those tend to last longer than creams. I could use a cream. It doesn't have as much, it, they usually don't have as much control. Um, 
and so my hair just kind of gets pretty frizzy after day one or day two of using a cream. So I like to use a gel. Um, I will talk about which products to use on what type of curly hair. Just kind of go through the basics at the end of this video. So my hair is not super, super thick, so I only, I only divide it into two sections when I apply, when I apply product. Um, but when your hair is thicker, you should probably clip half of it up and make sure you're getting like product into this area that's kind of missed a lot of the times. So you could section it by doing like the back half, like down here, your nape, up here, and maybe the sides, but just sort of um, make sure that you're, you're getting like the inside of the hair and not just the outer part, like the surface. So I'm really like working it through. And my hair is, um, I can pull on it and kind of smooth the product through without pulling any curl out because then I'm going to go back and, and scrunch it like this and the curl comes right back. So this is possible because my hair was very wet when I started putting the product in. When your hair is already drying, towards the ends, like you can't, you, you put the product in, the product soaks right up and um, it's still frizzy and you can't really manipulate it. So when your hair is still really wet like this, you can, you can play around with it and make sure that product is, is really in there. If you need to, you can always like flip your hair over and apply product under here, scrunch it like that. All right, so now I have all my product in and I'm going to start drying my hair. There's, the way that I've broken it down is there's three different ways to dry curly hair. Since my hair is not dry at all yet, I'll show you what I do when I don't have any time at all. After I put my product in, I wrap my hair, not tight, I just do it gently, and I use one of these clips I just clip my hair up like this and I make sure that I still have like this area of my hair like the root area is nice and loose so that can dry with some volume and then I go about my day for a little while maybe like drive to work let this sit for a little bit and then when the roots are are sort of mostly dry, I take it down and I let it dry the rest of the way just down. So what that does is it helps your roots to be able to curl. If you just if you just wash your hair and just go with it like this, the weight of the the weight of the hair is going to pull on your roots and then you're going to end up with straight roots and curly ends. So that's a way that you can avoid doing that without having to spend any time drying your hair. If you have um, again like that really super frizzy type of curl and it your hair is super thick and maybe it's very has lots of volume on its own then you're that's the type of curl that you could just let it just let it go from wet to dry on its own you don't have to do anything so the second way to the second way to dry your hair with curls if you just have a little bit of time is to dry your roots just use um, Use the diffuser for about five to 10 minutes, dry your root, and let the ends dry naturally. Okay, so this is my diffuser that I use. This is universal, pretty much fits almost any blow dryer. Um, it just kind of squeezes onto it. And this is the Conair Pro. So I'm just gonna pop that on. There we go. And uh, when you use a diffuser, you always wanna keep your blow dryer on the low, medium to low setting. If you put it on high, the motor in your blow dryer might blow up because there's blockage, like the diffuser is kind of blocking the air from coming out as freely as it needs to when the, when the dryer is on high, so just keep it on the lower, lower setting. 
So I'm going to show you, just demonstrate really quickly what you can do when you only have a few minutes of time to, to diffuse your hair. So you can leave the diffuser with the blow dryer on your hair as long as, as, long as you want to. Um, it'll start getting hot after a little while and then you'll know it's time to move. But I mean, you can just hold it on there for a while. Because it's on the low setting and because it's a diffuser, the air coming out isn't super hot or super strong. So it's okay to just hold it for a while. So again, this is what you would do. This is how you would do it if you only have, you know, five to 10 minutes of time to dry your hair. I know diffusing the whole head of hair takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So if you're not gonna be able to do that, then you just go around and focus on like the crown and the sides right here. And it kind of gives your hair like a little bit of a better shape as opposed to just letting it hang down and dry. So at this point you would be pretty much good to go. The whole point of drying just the root is so that again the heavy weight of the wet hair doesn't pull down at your roots give you like straight roots and curly ends. You want your curls to go all the way up to the root. I think that that's the most attractive look for a curly head of hair. Um, so even though, you know, when you have curly hair, it tends to be like big, sometimes your roots can can go flat and then you don't want that triangle look. So that's what, that's what I do when I only have a little bit of time. But now I'm gonna do the whole thing. It's gonna take about like probably like 20 minutes. still damp but it's mostly dry and I think that I usually let it dry the rest of the way on its own but as you can see it turned out really nice the curls look really good um, a few things about about curly hair that I've learned over the years is once it's done don't touch it <laughs> don't mess with it uh, let it dry completely before you know putting it up or doing anything else um, if you're gonna you know mess with it like I'm doing I'm just like touching it like very gently but um, but the more you leave it alone the better it looks if you're going to put your hair up then use either a, a clip or something like 
this this is a chopstick, um, a pen, you know, maybe one of those that are specifically for hair. But it's going to be better than a hair tie because a hair tie is really going to like pull your roots tight. And um, when you take it back down, then it's like your your style is pretty much ruined because then you have like straight roots and and curly ends. So using something like a clip kind of just doesn't apply very much pressure to any different part. So you just wrap it up loosely and do this kind of thing. Okay, so another thing that I do in between washes is I apply oil to the ends of my hair. Curly hair is very, very dry. What happens is the cuticle opens and it releases all the moisture and all the good stuff that we're constantly putting in it. Um, so throughout, throughout the days, I use a maybe like a Moroccan oil or something that has argan oil in it and I put that into my hair and it soaks it right up but that that keeps it nice and soft and um, from getting too brittle so just always remember that curly hair constantly needs moisture so the more conditioning and moisturizing that you can do the better your curls are going to be um, I, I will when I wake up in the morning um, say maybe it's like the second day and some parts of my hair kind of look flat or stuck together so that's where a pick comes in handy and um, you can just go into the root area and just kind of like pick it out like this and get it off of your scalp and get it back into like a shape that you like um, sometimes it starts to get real flat in the back here as you sleep so you can just pick through it day two day three um, you can use dry shampoo on curly hair, that's totally fine. If you have the issue where you've put product into your hair and, and it's giving you like that wet look or crunchy, um, don't worry, dry your hair, let your hair dry completely. And after it's dry, you can go back in and basically like break up the product. You know, you've put too, mo too much mousse or you've put too much gel in your hair. So you go back in and break up the product by doing this and just kind of scrunching it while it's dry um, that product you could possibly it could be a good product for you just use less of it if you're getting too much of that that crunchy wet look even though your hair is dry so you just go in and kind of break it up and soften it up um, and just kind of like you know toss all your curls and and it'll get to a point where you like the way that it looks Okay, so now uh, to go over just kind of the basics of how do you choose a product for your type of curls. So as a just kind of a general rule of thumb, the coarser, thicker, and frizzier your hair is, the more heavier you want to go with your products and you want to layer your products. So if you have very super thick, curly, frizzy hair, first you're going to want to use like a spray, kind of like the one that I used in the video today, just something that evens out the pH of your hair, leave-in conditioner, something that helps you work the product through the hair really well. It's usually like a leave-in conditioner spray. Then you want to use a serum and put it from root to end through your hair, section your hair out so that you, you get all those areas like within. You know you want to be applying product under here and not just here. Um, and then on top of the serum, you can use a gel or a mousse to really lock it in and keep that keep the frizz tame. Um, there's a saying that frizzy hair needs friends. So that means that when you have frizzy bits, they're just kind of like hairs that are on their own and they don't know what to do. So you're going to take it and grab a curl and twist it so that you can help that hair, you know, redirect that hair, group it with a bigger curl. Um, so when you have that super frizzy hair and you're applying your product, you can always twist it in like that and um, that usually seems to work pretty well for those types of hair. Um, then you have hair more like mine where it's where it's kind of finer, you know, medium, it's not super coarse and it's pretty curly and I don't need to use a serum. So I just use my leave-in conditioner spray and I use a mousse or a gel. Um, so a mousse is really like nice and lightweight and it, it works through the hair very easily. 
Um, gel can be a little bit heavy, so if you find the right one, you could use a gel, but I would start out with mousse and then, and then go to a gel if you find a good one. So then there's curls where it's very, very fine, thin hair. Um, your curl, you know, you might have longer or shorter hair, but your curls are, are, you know, they're harder to get them to kind of be consistent and they're a little bit all over the place because your, your hair is on the finer side. So with that type of hair, with that type of curl, you want to use a cream. So a cream isn't going to be as heavy as gel and it's not going to be as crunchy as mousse but a cream will be like the perfect balance for your type of hair that that it won't weigh it down too much and you don't really need a lot of like frizz fighting um, product so a, a cream is really good for those for keeping it really nice and and together enough but bouncy and and not weighed down so hopefully that covers most of most of like the curly hair types, um, there are different variations and I think that the most important thing to do is to find a product that works for you. And by working, I mean your hair looks similar to this with no frizz and that it can stay looking like this for a few days. Um, if you use a product where the, the very next day your hair is frizzy and the curl has, has, has lost its shape, then that's probably not the right product to be using. Um, so going through the trial and error of finding a, the right product is really important, but using the steps that I showed you today with the right product, your curls should look their optimum best. All right, thanks for watching.